Hi, my name is Dr. Yasser al Humeri, and today I will be performing the respiratory examination. First, you should start by introducing yourself and explaining your role and the nature of the examination to the patient. Then take consent and ensure privacy. Hi, my name is Dr. Yasser. I'm a general practitioner and today I'll be examining your lungs, which will include me looking, feeling and listening to your chest and back. Is that okay with you? Yes, sir. Be sure that no one will be entering or leaving the examination room during the examination. Okay. Remember, if the patient is from the opposite sex, you may ask for a chaperone. Next is HIPAA, which stands for hand washing, exposure of the patient's chest, position, which is 45 degrees, then appearance. The patient looks well, he is not in acute distress. Then look for signs of respiratory distress, like cough, mouth breathing, or accessory muscle use. Then inspect the patient's surroundings for sputum cup, inhaler, oxygen mask, or peak flow meter. You should always check the vitals after the general inspection. Next is the inspection for the abnormalities of the hands. We have C and C. We look for peripheral cyanosis and clubbing. Then T and T, temperature, compare both hands, and tar stains. W and W, check for wasting of the muscles of the hands. And the other W is weakness. Can you spread your finger? A and A, asterixes. Now he will demonstrate a positive sign. The other A is ask for tenderness at the wrist joint. Do you have pain? No. Do you have pain? No. R and R, radial pulse and respiratory rate by looking at the chest. Moving to the head, ask the patient to look up, looking for pallor. Then look for signs of Horner syndrome, ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis. Moving down to the nose, we look for working alanesi, and in the mouth, we look for first lips breathing and central cyanosis under the tongue. For the rest of the face, we look for plethora and swelling. Now moving down to the neck, we need to check for tracheal deviation. Put two fingers on the sternoclavicular joints and palpate the trachea using the middle finger checking for tracheal deviation. Compare both sides. Next is the examination of the cervical lymph nodes. Submental, submandibular, preauricular, posterior auricular, anterior cervical chain, posterior cervical chain, occipital next is the inspection of the chest look for s s s d d the first s is for shape scars symmetry by asking the patient to breathe in and out deeply and make sure that both sides are symmetrical then look for deformity and dilated veins this is the end of the inspection part next is the palpation we will palpate four things anteriorly and we will repeat two of them posteriorly. First, check for tenderness. Do you have pain? No. 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 Now locate the apex beat. Then check the position. So it is in the fifth intercostal space mediclavicular line. Then, check for chest expansion, take a deep breath, the distance between the two thumbs should be more than 5 cm. Then, check for tactile vocal affirmatives by asking the patient to say 99. 99, 99, 99. If the vibration felt is the same on the trachea, you should suspect a consolidation. Next is the percussion part. We need to compare both sides and the percussion should be resonant. Next is the auscultation part. In the first part, we have six points to auscultate. The first point using the bell of the stethoscope. 
in the supraclavicular area then we move to the diaphragm and again we should compare both sides The second part is the vocal resonance. Ask the patient to say 99 and use the diaphragm or the stethoscope and compare both sides. 99, And the third part is the whispering pectoriloquy. We ask the patient to whisper 99 and check in two areas. Now we move to the back. It is almost the same as the front with only few differences. Ask the patient to sit on the edge of the bed and start with the inspection. Again, look for SSSDD. First is shape, scars, symmetry by asking the patient to breathe in and out deeply and looking from above, comparing both sides, making sure that they are symmetrical. Then deformity and dilated veins. One more thing to be added here is the AP and transverse diameter of the chest to rule out some conditions like barrel chest in case of emphysema by looking at the patient from the side and from above. Next is the palpation and as we mentioned earlier we have two things to palpate for in the back. Chest expansion and again it should be more than 5 cm and then tactile vocal fremitus. 99, 99. 99. 99. Next is the percussion. For the auscultation, again we have three parts. Use the diaphragm of the stethoscope and auscultate on the same points of the percussion. The second part is the vocal resonance. Ask the patient to say 99 and auscultate over the same areas. 99 The third part is whispering pectoriloquy. Ask the patient to whisper 99 and auscultate over two areas using the diaphragm of the stethoscope. 99. 99. Now to end our examination, we should check for sacral edema, peripheral edema, and mention jugular venous pressure, which all can be signs of right heart failure secondary to COPD. Then DRTH. Thanks for watching.